Today we're gonna to talk about the puzzle in Steven Wonderboy Thompson and how to beat him. He fights very similar to one of my opponents that I fought in the past, Raymond Daniels. And talking to a lot of MMA fighters and hearing them on their podcast, they say the biggest mistake they make when they fight Wonderboy Thompson is they bring in someone like Raymond Daniels who fights similar to Wonderboy Thompson. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the trick how to beat that style, not how to fight like them, but how to beat it. We were talking about your fight with Raymond Daniels, which is one of my favorite fights ever. Thank you. Because he is this traditional karate guy. He was a point fighting champion and he has wicked kicks. He's just one of the most spectacular and dynamic guys in kickboxing. But your leg kicks and your constant pressure and just rock solid Muay Thai fundamentals. You just chopped him down, chopped him down, and then eventually head kicked him. Yeah, it's that those movement fighters are very tricky. And I think what made that fight super exciting was that old school UFC mentality. You had two different arts, you know, battling to see which one was better. And Raymond Daniels was undefeated. He was just knocking people out with spinning hook kicks every time he was fighting. So you know, as a, as a smart, intelligent fighter, you got to put pressure. And I remember um, we had a conversation about, you know, guys like uh, Wonder Boy Thompson. The most important aspect when fighting Wonder Boy Thompson is controlling the center of the octagon. You can't give them the option of moving backwards because that's when they're best. They're gonna avoid your punches and kicks and then counter back. With the cage behind their back, it only gives them the option of moving left or right, and that's when you can really capitalize and really use your low kicks, and it lets you touch them with your hands as well. Now that you're controlling the center of the octagon and you're keeping them against the cage, it's important now that you follow up your strikes. The first strike or the first combination might just touch Wonder Boy. And at that point, once you find your distance with your touch, that's when you need to follow up. It might be the second or third combination that does the knockout or does the damage. But in order to do that, you have to have confidence in your striking. A lot of guys who fight that karate style become very hesitant. They become timid and they don't want to come forward. You have to show your inner heart. You have to show your fighting spirit and you have to come forward. You might eat one shot, but you have to keep coming forward in order to close that distance because that's what they want to do. So when they're against the cage, that's why they can't move back and you're able to touch them and hurt them with your low kicks and your punches. For more of the advanced fighters who fight someone at that level, you got to look at their stance and their footwork. When you fight Wonder Boy Thompson, you see he has a bladed stance, which means his feet are almost sideways. If I hit the inside leg, I'm going to break my foot because his knee's pointing in the direction of my foot, very easy to get hurt. So that's why you need to really attack the back leg of Wonder Boy Thompson, or if you're more of an advanced fighter, switch southpaw and take the outside leg. Most southpaws will have a hard time blocking, especially the stance that Wonder Boy has staying sideways, he's gonna have a hard time blocking that outside low kick. There you go, some easy ways to beat Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Don't make the mistakes like Rory McDonald or Jorge Masvidal, who bring in fighters like Raymond Daniels who simulate the style of Thompson. Bring in someone who knows how to beat that style, and I'm your man. So hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Bye.